Are you rolling? Yeah, I'm rolling. Right down, right down. Oh. Oh, three of a kind. I'll put these on the, put this one on top. See, I got two. I got an extra one for backup. And this one here is the one they did today. And I don't think I need any glue. <laughs> Good smile. I'm glad it was you. Okay, I swear, in Jesus' name, to tell the whole truth, I'm nothing but the truth, so help me, Abba Father. Amen? Amen. Right on. So I'm right here with Willie Fly from Slap City. What's up, Willie? No, Salvation Mountain. For see, Salvation Mountain. see, everybody wants to slam me because I'm close to Slab City, but actually it's Slab Land, and I'm at Salvation Mountain now and forever. But don't okay. tell anybody because I don't want any traffic. My neighbors can't take it. Okay. So but no, come by, come by and see Leonard Knight's house and his mountain and his artwork and appreciate uh, that man for his work. Next question. So, uh, how long have you been at uh, Salvation Mountain for? Uh, seven and a half years. Okay. I have pictures I brought with me. And I have some better ones at home. So what brought you over to uh, Salvation Mountain? Uh, the Witch Creek Fire in 2007. Wow. Um, okay. And I, I lost my, my second wife that year. She divorced me and went back home to her mother. And I uh, heard that there was a place out here for me for free rent. So from Ramona, I came out here and went right over to see Leonard Knight. And uh, then I drifted back into slabs. And, Stayed there for about six years, and then somebody says, Willie, you've got to go down and help Leonard Knight. I said, oh yeah, what for? He said, well, you just need some help down there. I said, oh, okay, I'll, I'll think about it. So a couple days later, the guy said it again. I said, I'm going right down there. That's, I, I hear you now. So I went down there, and uh, I took the money for two days with the guy that just got out of prison, had a motorcycle and long hair. And uh, one night there was a problem with the police and, and Rocky and some other, get the dog problems, police, but they told me to move. They didn't ask me anything or tell me anything except to move. And they didn't tell me how far. So I went 200 feet and that's where I've been all this time. And I watched the back of the mountain. And if Ron has any problems or anybody else has any problems with the mountain, they just blow their horn loud enough and I'll come around there and we'll arrest their ass. Because I was a cop 50 years ago. And I arrested eight drunk drivers in one day. And I can arrest eight boogers in a minute. So they don't better not mess with Ron because he's doing a wonderful job and he's been there for about seven years. And uh, he's doing a great job. So I'm happy where I'm at, and I wouldn't want to go back to Insane Diego or La La Land. <clears throat> Unless it's for political reasons. Not bad. I haven't, I haven't lost my teeth yet. <laughs> so you take your bike from where you live all the way to the island? Then when you need to go to Brawley or to El Centro? Yeah. I, I, I started the Police Olympics. I rode a bike from here, San Diego to Salt Lake City, way back before Lance Armstrong yeah. fucked up. And I went off the freeway. That was a nice bike ride. Hmm, eight days to go eight and 850 miles. In July of 72. That's 50 years ago. I weighed 195 pounds then. I'm 138 right now. I got weighed today. I went to three doctors, got my eyes checked, I got my teeth checked, and <laughs> Dr. Gulam fixed my head. <laughs> he gave me a couple of prescriptions and uh, I'll take my antibiotics and dodge the flu, because I'm feeling pretty healthy. Well, if you drive your, if you get on your bike all the way from where you live, all the way to an island, that, that's, uh, that's, a good, that's some good exercise right there, so you must be pretty healthy. 
My blood pressure was 117 over 72, and that's high. That's, uh, that's better than mine. I think it's better than the doctor's. So you're in pretty good shape. So, so you were telling me about uh, the flying situation. What, what was that? The, well, the I, gliders? I, I've been teaching hang gliding since I left the police department. Right. And now I want to teach some more people, and I have to do it at Salvation Mountain or Signal Hill in Mexico. That's a nice place to fly, and I think that's where I need to go. I've flown 42 different places, and that little pimple across the border is just so delicious. I want to go get up on top of it, fly my glider off of there, get high, and come land at Salvation Mountain in about 45 minutes. I don't know, hour and 45 minutes. Yeah. Because it's about 60 miles in a, in a hang glider to go across country. You have to go around circles once in a while. But here's the kick. Here's what I really want to do is I want to put an electric propeller electric and solar panels on my sail and a foldable prop. And I want to take off with my feet from Signal Hill, also known as Superstition Mountain, and take off foot launch. And then if I don't get too high, kick in my electric prop with my solar panels on my, on my top of my sail. And let's see how high I can get then. If I can get 10 minutes of thrust at 300 feet a minute climb, I can get 3,000 feet maybe in 10 minutes. Once you get up that high, then you can start fooling with the currents that are moving in the direction you have to go, which is pretty much downwind. Triangular courses and competition when you have to fly into the wind are a little longer and uh, I'm going for a visual effect right now. I'm trying to be a drone in the air, you know. Like we have drones over at Salvation Mountain and sometimes they're a little rude, so uh, they have four engines and they all, make, they all go beep. Well, I don't want to make that kind of noise when I fly. I want it to be as quiet as possible. And the last time I heard a sailplane with a solar-powered uh, propeller, it sounded like a sewing machine. It sounded really good. It went over my head at about 600 feet. Yeah. Eric Raymond, the guy that made my harness. And I says, man, that sounds so nice compared to a weed whacker, you know, uh, external combustion. Unfortunately, a lot of this flying leaves a pecker track. And I think those peckers ought to keep their tracks in your pants and don't stink up the sky. That's, they haven't been stinking up the sky for the last year. I gotta hand it to them. I'm sorry those guys are not flying as much as they want to, but if they could see the mess they leave behind and how it affects the whole Mother Earth, well, they're gonna have a hard time finding pilots that really wanna do that kind of work, unless you go electric and you don't leave a, a scar in the sky that we all have to look at and say, why? When you're born in 48, you're part of the why generation. Either you're gonna find out why, or you're gonna tell somebody why. Right? Baby, boom, baby boomers my ass. <laughs> I saw Trump on TV today. He was on, uh, on the <laughs> no show with the Howie, uh, with the Howie. Oh, I can't believe it. Did you ever read Arnold Schwarzenegger's uh, bodybuilding book? No, never. Oh, it's we'll try to find it. It's a good book. It's a it good really? read. It really is. Uh, is that something that really uh, captures my attention, to be honest with you? Uh, well, he just caught my eye back in those days when he was governor and everything, and uh, uh, made the maid, and that's how things end sometimes. But some things, good things start, you know? Yeah. Really? Uh, I got married at 17 and a half. Okay, wow. And my baby was conceived in Palm Springs. Okay. My love baby kept me out of the war. Yeah, was that a um, Eisenhower Hospital? No, that's not. That's uh, that's Rancho Mirage. What's nope. the one in uh? No, I uh, Easter of uh, Easter of '65, because she was born in August '66, '67. Yeah, 
I had three children. They all graduated from UCSD. That's where I wanted to graduate from. And uh, they were all lifeguards. They all wore badges at one time. Eight grandchildren, one divorce, I'm afraid. But I have many blessings and many things that re say I'm doing a good thing. I'm glad I'm here. And uh, So you have a big family? Uh, not by, well, I, I, eight, eight grandchildren. My, my brother, my brother died and my sister's still alive. But uh, not average, size. most of us came from uh, Pennsylvania. Uh, that's a decent sized family. Yeah, yeah. How yeah. many brothers do you have? One brother died 10 years ago. Uh, too much shit in his lungs and uh, premature uh, partying. Okay, anyway, that I love them. Hey, yeah, sisters. Was 21 young, 21 months younger than me. Okay. Yeah. So what? Are and you while I was copping, he was riding Harley's. <laughs> he was trying to stay away from me. Then he had an accident. So what are your political beliefs? Uh. Actually, uh, because of what I've experienced in my uh, lifetime with politicians, I'm probably a political terrorist. That's the way to describe my view of how this world is working right now and the talking heads that run the government. <sighs> Trump was the wrong color, and it takes two jokers to beat a Trump. Kind of reminds me of Pete Wilson. When he left and dumped on San Diego, that's when I ran for mayor, 1984. So you ran for mayor? Of San Diego. Wow. Insane de ego. I don't go there anymore because the beaches got little turds in the water and the night and morning low clouds and the June gloom and the May gray that you have to. Anyway, I don't go body surfing at Mission Beach anymore. And they won't let you do Boomer because they let the seals come in. And uh, Black's Beach is a good place to go. That's where I find my gliders and that's where I can swim naked and not get arrested. And uh, it's pretty cool there, but it's too cool in the summer. Too much fog stuff. So, but you know, what, you know what grows good in that kind of weather? Sage. You find some really beautiful sage in the canyons around Torrey Pines and H Hidden Valley. and. San Clemente Canyon, that area. There's some beautiful things still living there and also some signs of cleaning up pollution. I used to live about four miles from the dump. And the dump water used to go down in San Clemente River and Creek and go west to what we now call 52. And that was our playground back in the 60s. I got this. I got to San Diego in '60, and I was at uh, Braddock Elementary in Culver City in '54. That's where I got most of my education, and I had job opportunities up there that I could not touch down here. This place was so closed, and there was nothing to do actually when I, we got into our house in San Diego in '60. But coming down the freeway, or f freeway, fuck, 101. The nicest thing about coming in San Diego was to see the sailplanes at North Torrey and see that nice beach. That's what I remember about San Diego. So then I, I helped build the uh, UCSD uh, library and the uh, dorms. My kids went to, went to study in and live in, graduate from, put on some seminars for hang gliding, taught some people how to uh, detect drunk drivers for the police department. I took the chief's daughter riding at night. Show her how to arrest drunk drivers. Uh, impaired drivers. You don't have to be drunk, just be impaired. And I always tell the truth. <laughs> Some police officers have lie detectors in their eyes. And look at me when you're talking to me. Politically, are you more of a conservative or... I'm radical. Radical what? Leftist? Radical, uh, radical 
Right I'm right. I'm right, I'm, and I'm trying to convince you I'm right. See, in, in aviation, you have a right wing and you have a left wing, and in the middle is the fuselage. Right, from that whole thing, you pretty much know politics. You have too much right wing, you go into a spiral diet. Too much left wing, you go into a spiral diet. Right. And then there's the gas problem again. Um, but you're trying to go straight, get the best gas mileage, or fuel economy, or whatever it is. But I don't do planes, because they make too much noise, and I can't afford the wet rate. And those hang gliders are so quiet, so fun, and so hanging by a string. Scares the pants off of some peckers. But once you, once you try, once you uh, decide you're not going to be afraid to try it, maybe you'll see my video when I get it finished. What I can show about? it to you anytime, actually. What is that video about? It's called You Can Fly. 16 exercises on how to go down a grassy slope in a park without crashing. That's the reason you don't need wheels. Because I'd give a no crash course of hang gliding. And you can tell everybody that. <laughs> so how did you learn how to it's not. It's not for suicidal people. Yeah. It's for people that appreciate the planet, right. don't want to make too much noise or leave a turd. Yeah. Vortex, you can leave Vortex all day long. <laughs> I used to ride a bike all the time, okay? But then when I got the handlebars in the hang glider and saw how much more freedom I had, no one have to worry about flat tires, no lanes, no lines, no lights, no man-made laws, and there's no traffic. No traffic. Oh, so the guys are flying with you. Because we're staying under 12,500. I've been up to 14.5 from Buckman Springs in the clouds. Awesome. I'll take a parachute next time. <laughs> I, saw, I heard some people went up 4,400 feet a minute in a thermal. Going up, that was the thermal. Did I have a variometer in a wing? I think it's 45 miles an hour going up, and that's enough, that's fast enough. <laughs> I think it was done by two women, in fact, <laughs> old, an old soaring magazine. But don't tell everybody how much fun we're having. They might think, shouldn't do it. Well, any more questions? Like a moderate. Yeah, I'm moderate. I'm, I'm probably I'm in the fuselage. Okay, I'm I'm not right wing. I'm not left wing. I'm not going to okay. spiral. I'm going to be really in the middle. Truth, justice, and the American way. So do you think Trump's going to win 2024? I don't think so. No. No. no, no. I think um, I think I think there were 40,000 doctors. Psychiatrists have already signed a paper that he's not mentally stable, but he's better than Hillary Clinton. Thank God he got us away from Hillary. Amen? We got another problem, though. It's hate. It's all over. And we got a weather problem. And some of the Indians think there could be two asteroids. Two asteroids. At the same time. Think we got problems? Wait till the asteroids come by. No. Enjoy your day. Try to figure out what the Lord asks you to do while you're here. So, uh, you ran for mayor? Yes. What year? 80, 84. There were 18 other candidates. I came in fourth okay. behind Roger Hedgecock and Maureen O'Connor. Not bad. And, and, hey, I think both of them eventually played their cards out. But we lost the Chargers. They still got homeless problems downtown. It smells like urine. Uh, they, actually, it's not sustainable. So we'll see how it works out. It's gonna be a hot summer. Probably one of the hottest on record. And we haven't had a good earthquake a couple Easter's back. 
how many how many earthquakes have you been survived? Oh, quite a few. Oh, well, I mean, I, I mean I seven. Think, I think the biggest one. I was a little kid. Must have been in the nineties. I think mid nineties. Forgot how big it was. Yeah. Was it? I put, we found it over here in India. I used to live in. We were living in India, down in India, California. So. I you know what Pigeon Pass is? No. Moreno. Yeah. Valley? Yeah, there's a mountain up there. Okay. Fly. So when did you, um, I wonder your, uh, did your political career begin? Like, what did you start, how did you start off? When Pete Wilson decided he wanted to become governor of California. I was the first one in the office to take out the papers. <laughs> And then about 18 other or 20 other people took out papers. Yeah. I didn't campaign for money. I went to a couple of gatherings. But this is right after, well, I was 11 years after I left the police department. And, and what year was oh, that? Oh, 12. What year was 80? that? I left the police department in March of 75. Okay. So uh, then when you ran for mayor, you were, you were already... Well, I saw what was happening to San Diego during that interim. I know, but when you ran for mayor, you had already been a politician for nine years. No, I was a policeman. Well, you I said was a policeman from 1969 to 1975, and then I started doing hang gliding right away after from 75 oh. until now. See, I'm, I'm, I'm the hang gliding entrepreneur, let's put it that way. Okay. There's only one person in the world that's ever registered the word fly and got paperwork for it. I got a number. I'm registered. I'm certifiable. I'm going to make clothes with hemp for people that want to fly my hang gliders and competition. You see, there's no competition except Red Bull in hang gliding and we need clothes. I want clothes when I go fly, when I match my glider, so forth. Maybe make my own glider, but uh, until you see hang gliding competition, I started the first one-on-one -on -one double elimination competition from the La Jolla Indian Reservation off of Palomar Mountain in 70, what, 77, 78. And then I went back there and ran the campground, the hang gliding campground in 86. I lived there for a year and a half. And then I went to Ramona. Then I got married and went to Palmo Valley and got burned out and came to Salvation. Slab land. I don't live on a slab. I live on the dirt. <laughs> Too much politics for people to have slabs. It's almost like a house and you gotta <laughs> put a fence around it so and it, get a dog and then you got another house. I don't have a fence around my house. Is Salvation Mountain for sale? No, it's already been bought. Already been uh, bought. They bought several acres of it and I thought I was outside of the their property line, but it turns out their property line goes way south of me. Who bought it, do you know? Um, uh, probably the Leonard Knight or the Salvation Mountain Foundation, which is a group of nine people that uh, conduct meetings and dispense uh, proceeds from the donation box or however else you know they receive donations uh, for maintaining and preserving Leonard Knight's mountain. Want to see a picture of it? That's from the uh, docent table. Yeah. And you can see that the paint and the work is still always in progress. And this guy's 24-7 doing security at night, trying to sleep, but doing security at night, and then uh, doing some work on the mountain and seeing the volunteers that um, want to volunteer. Some of them get paid, I think. I thought, that, uh, I thought that the mountain was still in the process of being sold. I doubt it. There's all kinds of rumors that from there are a lot of naysayers. Oh man, it used to be people were sabotaging communications out there. 
and then they were they were trying to sabotage Leonard's work because they were saying the paint was polluting the dirt. And there's there's a there's probably half half people out there are atheists. You got the rest of the others are punks. There's a couple Christians out there, a couple Jews, but uh, basically they're slavers once they cross the river. Try not to go. Yeah, I go in there, and they have entertainment on Saturday nights. You know, and they got. You called me the other day to, uh, about telling me that you were at the range, right? Yeah, that's where they're going to be playing the best they can. The guy Builder Bill's been doing that job for what, 15 years, maybe or more, probably as long as I've been out there. And he's from San Diego, and he's a nice guy. And I don't know how much longer he's going to be able to keep up with uh, the crowds that he's attracting, you know, because a lot of people know about Salvation Mountain. I didn't see the movie uh, Into the Wild until it got out here. Mm. But I guess it came out pretty back in middle 2000. I don't know when it came out, but it was earlier than I thought. I thought it was a real old movie, but apparently not. Did you see the, uh, the Bad Batch movie that was made here a couple years ago? With Jim Carrey? Yeah. No, I've never seen it. That, well, they only had a minute on the movie. Of uh, Salvation Yeah, I mean, they, they spent five days and paid 125 people. Uh, good wages. <laughs> and <laughs> they looked like they were getting some good footage. Mm -hmm. But I didn't, couldn't figure out how they were going to put it all together and package it up. It looks like they were just having more fun than anything serious. They had more mo some money to blow and they blew it out here because they only put one minute or less of slabs in it, and, and you know what they put in there? Preacher Dave getting his dose of LSD. Wow. <coughs> That's the kind of shit they want, mm -hmm. see? And it's all about eating people and, and raising people so you can eat them in case of emergency and so forth. Mm -hmm. I saw it once, and I don't have to see it again. <laughs> Nothing about Nyland or any of the good stuff that I thought might have gone in it. You doing? You enjoy yourself? I am now. That's right. Cooled off. You need some more cold. Got some of this energy out of me. All right. Did you have a cup of ice? All right, we're going to go if you want to go now. That's 10 minutes at least. Yeah, we can go ahead. You going to be over for another hour? Yeah, I mean, right now, before I said, don't keep going. I only smoked half a cigarette. Started talking with my new teeth. Did you want to just do it? I know something different. No do you want to do a quick uh, explanation of what you're doing here? I mean, you could do it. I mean, we can do it real quick. We'll just out there. I'll just like to say, stop by the boys. Found this on the bus. You want to do it real quick? Found this at the doctor's office in the alley. Look at this thing, man. It had wheels on it and a stick coming out of the top, and it was pulled over like somebody kicked it over. And I went over and picked it up. and it's 13,000 in it. Samsonite. Let me see the mic real quick. I'm going to record something.